Vita. Hello and welcome to another installment of Issues and Answers with me, your host, Jesse Leons, um, from the Department of Sustainable Development within the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training. Uh, this edition of Issues and Answers, we're talking the coastal and underwater cleanup that has been scheduled in St. Lucia for Saturday, September 18th, 2021. And that is one activity as part of many in observance of International Coastal Cleanup 2021. I have in studio with me to speak to us about that observance as well as this specific activity uh, from the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, Mr. Craig Henry, CEO, and also from the Caribbean Youth Environment Network, Mr. Chris Seeley. And uh, we have uh, in studio, but not on set just as yet, is, uh, from, is Mr. Donovan Brown from the St. Lucia Dive Association. Association. He will be joining in just a moment to speak on a special activity as part of the coastal and underwater cleanup, the underwater aspect of things. So first of all, good day to you, Mr. Henry, Mr. Seeley. Thank you so much for being here. Sure, thank, thank you. you. Wonderful. It's a pleasure so, being here. Wonderful. Just tell, tell us, let's open with the observance, International Coastal Cleanup Day 2021. Speak to us about that observance. Uh, to you, Mr. Henry. Sure. Well, the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, um, we are happy to collaborate with the Department of Sustainable Development, CAYEN, and of course, uh, the major donor to this event, which is the um, uh, Caribbean Gulf Fish and Fisheries Institute. We are collaborating with them on the partnership agreement that speaks to supporting the Clean Seas Initiative. And that is really a global movement uh, address to address uh, Global Marine Litter. The GCFI is uh, responsible for the Caribbean node of the green, um, sorry, Global uh, Marine Litter Movement. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the funding that was provided of, uh, would, of course, go into supporting uh, the national initiatives related to reducing um, single use plastics, uh, marine litter, um, and um, specifically the coastal cleanup and of course the underwater cleanup um, that is scheduled to occur on September the 18th. Okay, I just want to get an overview. What is the situation like in St. Lucia in terms of, from your office perspective, yeah. in terms of what, what our island is facing in terms of uh, the amount of litter that we, you know, we are experiencing? Well, it, it is something that is um, saddening to say that we continue to see, despite efforts, because um, of course we, there was such an initiative last year and that was founded by Massey. Mm -hmm. And what it was revealed is that there is uh, a huge amount of marine litter. We have an, uh, an issue whereby even our underwater um, environment, our marine environment is so affected and we don't see it because it's not somewhere that we um, every day. It's only people who navigate there, such as the divers and snorkelers who would encounter that. Um, but we also see the land-based pollution, and especially with plastics, um, the flooding situations that we see, the clogging of our drainage, our uh, major um, networks, even our rivers and so on, and that affects our uh, marine and, land and terrestrial biodiversity, of course. Mm -hmm. And we note that um, there is this concern that even with the consumption of, um, well, seafood, um, that we are also ingesting marine plas uh, microplastics. And so it, it is worrying in a sense um, to say that we continue to see that there is um, rampant um, littering and disposal, in this community disposal mm -hmm. of, 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 of garbage, but of, of especially in terms of plastics, single-use plastics. Um, and as well, the attitude seems to have um, not improved. Um, I remember decades ago, you would have had campaigns, later campaigns that seem to have produced some results, but we seem to have relaxed somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Solution National Conservation Fund, um, we are 
at, at every turn we would support efforts, um, national efforts um, directed at reducing the production, use and consumption of single-use plastics and this was an, a, a very um, opportune time um, and partnership uh, to uh, support these efforts um, in terms of promoting the idea of having clean seas. We, we, we definitely recognize the, the significance of the marine environment to the Caribbean, to small island developing states, um, to St. Lucia in terms of um, our fisheries sector, our tourism sector, and of course recreational and um, biodiversity protection. So in a nutshell, it's just to say that the, the, the long list or the broad range of activities that will lead to um, reducing the impact, mm -hmm. negative impact of single-use plastics or indiscriminate disposal of plastics in our coastal and marine environment, and even in, in our terrestrial spaces, uh, the SLUNCF will take the opportunity to support where it can. Okay, thank you for that. Sure. And uh, from the Caribbean Youth Environment Network's perspective, first of all, tell us what the network, just briefly, is all about. And we know that the uh, ICC has been successful in large part due to the work of volunteers. So speak to us about this, this task and, and the role of CYEN in this effort annually. Okay, great. So the Caribbean Youth Environment Network, it's an uh, organization as youth-led organization, and it has been in existence for more than 30 years. Um, St. Lucia being one of the chapters, we have 16 chapters around the Caribbean, and one of the main initiative is to help empower young persons to take a leadership role in advancement of the economy, advance of um, skills and development. And one of the ways that we do that is engaging persons in international coastal cleanup. As you said, International Coastal Cleanup is geared and led by youth and especially volunteers worldwide. It has been around from 1986, so that's about 35 years um, that International Coastal Cleanup has been running where persons have been leading the cause of cleaning the coast, waterways, and underwater. And to date, over 16 million individuals have participated in um, volunteered in international coastal cleanup worldwide. Um, we've collected over 400 million trash out of our ocean and waterways. And the reality is there is more than what we collect mm -hmm. because some of the information, and this is where ocean conservancy comes in, in ensuring that the data is collected because without the data or the information collected, the result of making policies to help deal with marine litter um, is not possible. And where the Caribbean Youth Environment Network has engaged, especially in the island of St. Lucia, youth, adults from all over um, the island in engaging in that cleanup campaign. The cleanup campaign is done every the second week of every September, which usually fought, fall on the, se on the 18th. Mm -hmm. but you can engage in international coastal cleanup throughout the year. And one of the ways you can do that is that we do not, we try to use a new um, initiative, which is the Swell app. So it's digital, we know everyone has a smartphone, either you have a, an Android or an Apple device or a tablet. So you could simply download the app, it's called mm -hmm. Swell app, and you could populate the information. You do not need, you just need to download the app in advance before you go to your cleanup site. But the information there can be uploaded without, without internet connection. And when you get to your internet connection, then it will upload. So if you're out, you say, okay, I don't get internet service. Whenever you have the app, the information will be stored in there. And whenever you're in an area where there's internet connection, you will get the information populated. One of the problems we have, um, as we know, the pandemic, and in July, mm -hmm. we, the Ocean Conservancy, which is, its, its headquarters is in Washington, D.C. They engage a few coordinators around the globe to engage in what you call 
um, PPE, seeing what the, 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 the different tool, the different um, equipments and stuff we use on a daily basis, especially now we have COVID such as our gloves, the mask, yeah. the face shield. We realize that there are billions of that being disposed and especially the, what you call the sanitizing wipes. And it's a matter of concern now. So apart from now collecting straws, collecting plastic bottles, collecting um, trash cans, now we're faced with a new litter, which is gloves, um, masks, face shields, and wipes. And we're asking the public, or St. Lucian on the whole, to participate in this cleanup. But the first thing is to take initiative of ensuring that you dispose of your trash properly. Because one of the reasons why we use these PPAs is to protect ourselves. And if we just litter them or drop them anywhere, we're actually destroying the environment even more. And this would inadvertently affect our economy. Because if our government has to send money to one another industry, such as our youth empowerment, then they'll have to be led to trash and ensuring that the litter is being collected. So ICC this year is around the um, St. Lucia, but one of the reality is we're faced with avoiding the crowd. So we're encouraging individuals to use um, small um, family-based um, teams so household based teams to go out and do cleanup. There are a few locations that will engage, such as Viewfort, the Labushi area. We also have in the Asia area, we're also looking at the Ban Banan area in Castries and also in um, some of the areas in Sufre. But we're encouraging individuals, the public on a whole, to use the Swell app and upload the information because the information that you're collecting there is valid and it will help in making the decisions for protection of our marine okay. life. Thank you uh, for that, Mr. Seely. So seven locations across St. Lucia, yeah. right? And that includes uh, the Department of Sustainable Development's Integrated Ecosystems Management and Restoration of Forests in the Southeast Coast Project, which is financed by the GEF, that is the Global Environment Facility and implemented by the United Nations Environment Program. We are due for a break. When we come back, we also hear from Mr. Donovan Brown, who is from the St. Lucia Dive Association. A critical component of this upcoming cleanup is the underwater uh, cleanup as well. So quite interesting to find out how that will be done uh, on the 18th of September. So stay tuned for that and more coming up after this break. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no. they do. Think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The Good Food Revolution. Keeping hands clean is important for good health. However, after a disaster, staying clean is hard to do, especially if there is no pipe on water. Simple things you can do to stay clean and remain healthy are wash your hands with soap and clean water. If these are not available, sanitizers with alcohol are options. Wash your hands many times during the day, before preparing food, eating, caring for a sick person or baby, treating a cut, wound, or sore. Wash hands after using the bathroom, changing diapers, caring for animals, caring for sick or injured persons, after handling garbage. Washing your hands is one of the best ways to prevent illness. For further information, contact the Bureau of Health Education at telephone number 468 
Thank you so much for staying tuned. This is an edition of Issues and Answers on NTN. And in this edition, we are talking International Coastal Cleanup 2021. We do have an activity, coastal and underwater cleanup, happening in St. Lucia on the 18th of September as part of activities to observe that day. Uh, we have in studio with us from the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, Mr. Craig Henry, and we also have from the Caribbean Youth Environment Network, who just went off platform, Mr. Chris Seeley. And, and before we went to break, he was speaking to us about the activities that will be happening, uh, the groups that are being tar targeted right now, and due to the pandemic, persons are being asked to uh, stay within their family groups as much as possible, their household units uh, for this, uh, this cleanup day. Um, we now have on set with us, he was in the, uh, in the studio space earlier, uh, Mr. Donovan Brown from the St. Lucia Dive Association, and he will be speaking to us a bit about the underwater component of this cleanup activity coming up on the 18th of September. Good day to you, Mr. Brown. Thank you for being here. Thank you for, for having me. Wonderful. So talk to us a little bit more about the logistics of this undertaking, underwater undertaking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the undertaking will be done by a number of dive operators on island from Soufriere in, in the south all the way up to Lespoir in the north. We'll be participating with this. And um, again, this year, we are getting some funding from the National Conservation Fund. Um, last year, we got major sponsorship from Massey Stores. And they provided um, personal hygiene stuff for the participants. They will this year provide gloves and mesh bags to collect the debris from under the, under the ocean. And um, basically that's it. We're going out, do our dives, collect the stuff, bring it back. Um, earlier someone was asking if we weigh the trash. The <laughs> trash. Um, last year when we did it, I'm not quite sure if it was weighed, Kirk, Craig, but I know we collected it and the, the um, solid waste management collected it. I'm not sure if they weighed it, but we had over 40 bags last year. Um, we did do a part of Sufria, which I'm told this year is the main area we'll be going to. And from that era alone, we got almost 20 bags of, of massive bags of garbage. Um, I think what this brings, especially to us as divers, home, is that I don't think persons on land recognize that everything they dump in the gullies or in the ocean ends up um, in places they shouldn't be sometimes. We, we go diving every day, and sometimes we wish we could say to a person, please don't throw this away. Don't throw it in the ocean, because mm -hmm. it, 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 it doesn't help. Plastics are the biggest concern now. And as um, Craig said earlier, microplastics and the fish we eat is becoming something of a lot of concern. The scientists are telling us that, that fish are consuming more plastic now. So when they do their tests on it, they'll find a lot of that in there. But aside from that, it's ugly. Yeah? Um, our friend spoke earlier, and he said that the, the protective gear. PPEs. Is, yes, they're ending up under the water and in alarming numbers now, mm -hmm. um, especially around the resort areas. Yeah? But on all, almost all the dive sites from Sufria all the way to, to, cap, to cap the point, we find these things on the water. For us as divers, it's a, it's a good time. We enjoy doing this because it's our opportunity to, to clean up areas that get polluted. We, we have some areas that we can guarantee when we go there, we find lots of plastic bottles. The ocean seems to bring them together and deposit them in certain areas. And we go there and clean these areas. But um, the message I would like to bring across to everyone is try and put your litter in a, in a bin. We need to try very hard because most everything ends up on the water. Refrigerators, televisions, bicycles. Mm -hmm. You know, you, people just discard them and because it's out of sight for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, out of mind. It's, it's fine, yeah, it's out of mind. 
but we see it. You know, our job is to take locals and visitors on the water. And sometimes you feel a bit embarrassed with, yeah, the, with I, the things you find there. I was about to ask, you know, what are the implications for business, for, for your commerce? Well, the, 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 the good thing, or maybe it's a bad thing, it happens all over the world. So, and uh, most of our guests, they, they themselves are very conscious. So they will pick up, yesterday for example, we had a guy, he and his wife was out with us. And he came up from the dive with two bottles, two plastic bottles in his hand. His wife actually was just learning to dive. So she said, you know, darling, why, why? He said, no, no, no. Anywhere in the world he goes and he, see, he picks them up. And that is what is happening to, to the diving fraternity. Anywhere divers go and they find rubbish, they'll take it up. So it's a little less embarrassing. But for me, it's not so much embarrassment. It's what it represents. Mm -hmm. Littering is never good. And it, it represents a bad habit that, that we need to you know, work on. Put your garbage in a bin. Let your collectors take it away and bring it to the, the landfill or something. Right? Um, tomorrow, well, Saturday, I should say, represents a day when we have about 40 divers already listed to go down. And we have a number of locals who are also divers, but they don't belong to dive operations. They have also pledged that they want to join, join us in this venture tomorrow, uh, on Saturday. And we look at, we're looking forward to that. There's a land component this year. Um, so most of the operators will also utilize their staff and other personnel to clean up the beaches and surrounding areas. Um, recently, there seemed to be a serious influx of plastic bottles and beaches. And I don't know what caused that, but you know, if almost every beach you walk on, every stretch of beach, there's a, there's a massive amount of plastic bottles all over. Um, the Replast guys have been doing good with their stuff, mm -hmm. but I wish they'd take dirty, bo dirty bottles too. They only take clean bottles, so they, <laughs> There are people who extract the clean ones and leave the dirty ones, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. But, but we, we also, we are going to deal with that portion of the cleanup also. So it's not just on the water, mm -hmm. not just a baglo. We're going to do on the land, on the beach also. Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask also, what, well, you can't speak from a scientific perspective, but what has your observation been over the years in terms of the correlation between our coral reef? We know climate change and other uh, effects have, have a role to play, but what have you seen in the last decade or so, two decades, um, happening based on the, the influx of litter ending up in our water? It, last year when we did the cleanup, we did a, we did a, a documentary of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the highlights of that documentary was a bicycle where the, the, the rubbers on the wheel had, had um, sponges, underwater sponge going on it. And, and it, it, a lot of people found it, you know, it's a lovely photograph. But what it represents is that everything you throw in the ocean, the ocean have a way of integrating it and using it. And, and sometimes not positively. I'm not a scientist, so I can't tell you what the negative effect was of that sponge going on a piece of rubber. But we do know that these things are not good for the ocean. Um, Again, I can't emphasize it more. I wish our habits would change. That's the main thing. Yes, the cleanup is good. Yes, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it every year. And the, the other unfortunate thing is that every year we find more rubbish, <laughs> not less. And, and that is the real unfortunate part of this, this operation. Back to our conservation fund, talk to yeah. us about what Saturday, September 18th means in the whole effort overall, because what is happening annually and what will Saturday mean for, for the effort in terms of perhaps recruiting more regulars in the, in the cleanup process? Sure, and I'd like to um, thank Donovan for um, you know, speaking to the, the marine aspect on it and um, Mr. Silas speaking to uh, the terrestrial cleanup, the coastal cleanup. And um, I'd also like to emphasize there's some um, element of personal responsibility that while we are having these coastal, these cleanup activities, that we cannot um, overemphasize that, you know, it is a personal responsibility to take care of our own um, garbage to dispose of properly and so on and so forth. And again, highlight 
that given that we are in the COVID context, um, there are two issues. One, with the indiscriminate um, disposal of the um, PPE, the protective equipment, but as well the fact that if we're having such activities that you know folks can observe the, uh, the social distancing protocols. I'd like to encourage, even if we are not in your particular community, given that St. Lucia is a coastal island and so on and so forth, you could organize with your family and your friends to um, do some coastal cleanups as well. Um, perhaps those who are, who are uh, 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 more inclined um, could take photos and, and, and um, see and give evidence of you know what um, they've done in their particular um, areas. I'd like to highlight as well that you know there are certain facts that speak to 73 percent of beach litter is just plastic and so this is why there's this focus enormous um, focus on getting rid of plastics and reducing um, the footprint um, related to single-use plastics globally um, and um, I'd just like to plug in another very essential element is that plastic bags uh, kill uh, 100,000 marine animals annually. And again, given the context that we are in, where we are depend, we have a very vibrant fishery sector. We have our diet. Many of us consume seafood and so on and so forth. We have to be concerned at the levels of um, um, plastics that we're finding in our marine environment. And of course, you can imagine that, you know, fishing, fishing um, and marine animals um, eating or ingesting microplastics because it looks like food to them. They can't discriminate uh, on what's the implication for us. So in all of that, I'd like to say that, and, um, say that the, the Solution um, National Conservation Fund, um, we stand by um, our partners and we are always willing to collaborate. Um, in areas that would support the protection and conservation of our critical ecosystems. And given that um, the critical issue of um, plastics pollution and of course biodiversity protection are all enmeshed um, in, the, um, in the symbolic activities that we are having on Saturday, September 17th, again remind the public that um, there is an element of personal responsibility whereas we can um, have a thousand cleanups for the next thousand years mm -hmm. it also means that um, the fact that we will be continuing to have these cleanup exercises is just a reflection of our own personal failures and you know dereliction of duty so um, I would like to thank um, both the Diver Association and CYN for and the Department of Sustainable Development for being excellent partners. And it would be remiss of me not to thank as well my staff and, of course, um, GF GCFI for supporting this important venture. Okay, we're running out of time, but just to ask, how can persons get in contact with uh, the National Conservation Fund if they want to be a, a closer part, more than just their community or family relegated activity? But sure be part of the organization? Well, you could visit our website at www.sluncf.org for more information, uh, not just about the coastal cleanup exercises, but the conservation fund in general, what we do, our scope of operations, and the opportunities that there are for um, community livelihoods, community work, and collaborations in general. Okay, wonderful. I'd like to thank you, all three gentlemen, for coming in to speak to us about sure. the upcoming activity and also to really lay bare the reality of the, the plight that our coast and our underwater environment uh, are facing with the use of the indiscriminate the disposal of plastics yeah. uh, in our environment. Uh, of course, Mr. Craig Henry, St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, Mr. Uh, Chris Seeley from the Caribbean Youth Environment Network, and Mr. Donovan Brown from the St. Lucia Dive Association. Thank you once again. Uh, we invite you to be part of the undertaking in observance of International Coastal Cleanup 2021 in St. Lucia. We have the coastal and underwater cleanup in whatever way you can. If you want to be closer, closely involved with the work of the CYEN, the NCF and the Dive Association, you can contact them, but you can do your own in and around your community 
community, just relegate it to your own household, see what you could pick up, see what you can do on your own, because we're all affected by the situation. Let's help to make our environment um, a much pleasant one to live in. Yeah. So that's all we have for uh, the underwater cleanup. Thank you so much for watching. This has been another edition of Issues and Answers. My name is Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more programming from NTN. Goodbye. Yeah.